All right, welcome to another episode of uh, Favorite Flies of the North. Uh, today I'm going to be tying for you a classic uh, feather wing salmon fly, a mixed wing. You probably know this one, it's the Silver Doctor, uh, but this is how I tie it myself uh, for fishing. And I'm tying this one on a size 2 uh, single hook. And I'm going to take you through the processes of uh, how I tie this fly and what in my experience is the is the best way uh, to tie a, a salmon fly for fishing. Alright so first up is the tag or the tip uh, which consists of a, a thin uh, silver a oval silver tinsel and I'm gonna work myself just a little bit back here um, and as you can see I'm tying this on the far side of me and there, there's a reason for that um, just to hide just to hide it a little bit better alright so yeah I don't want to go any further than that at this point I'm gonna be building up a tiny taper here like that. I'm just going to take my thread away. Now I'm going to place down this silver tinsel. And please know that this is kind of awkward for me because I'm sitting quite far away uh, from the fly now because where I like to have my head um, my camera is So now I can trim this one away, but and what many people do, they trim it off here. Don't do that. Trim it there. Because that will help <coughs> build your underbody. Alright, so next is the tag, which consists of a thin piece of floss. Now this is real silk, by the way. And I don't want to crowd this area up too much, so I'm only going to secure it in with three turns. Again, I'm going to take my thread away. Right now, if this was a bigger fly, I would have tapered. Uh, the tag area too, but as this is only a size two, I uh, I don't bother. Right, so I like to use my finger here to just keep my floss in place as I work my way up. If I was tying a display fly I would probably be using gloves here, but for a fishing fly this doesn't matter. And as you can see it's not 100% clean. That also does not matter. Alright, so now I have the tip and the tag in place. And the next thing I want to do is to tie down these ends. You know, my thread is slightly waxed. It's I didn't wax it too much because this is a thin thread and it has a tendency to break if I wax it too much so but you know you should wax your thread when you're tying classic salmon flies and there you go all right
right so now I'm left with this end right here and what I like to do with this end now and this is also to help maintain uh, the smoothness of the body that I need because this is going to be a um, tinsel body so I grab a hold of this one with my left hand and look what I can do now make really nice turns backward and get them perfectly adjacent and I can do it with great speed there is another way to do this too um, and I'll show you that uh, in the next step of the uh, underbody because as you can see I build up this underbody in many steps I'm going to go stop there <coughs> and now I can trim this off there we go so next now is the tail and the tail veiling and the feather I've chosen for the tail is this one it's as you can see just big enough and there really isn't any reason to use a larger feather than what you need for the tail you know if you use a bigger feather it's easier that the feather will uh, end up going to one side uh, when you start fishing it so what I do here is just I take this tiny feather and I place it straight on top I look that's too long remember that a tail on a salmon fly should not be too long unless you like tying blackers or, or something like that alright so as you can see this feather is a little bit too bendy for my taste so what I can do is I can take the feather and stroke it like that between my nails you can see this is quite crooked but if I tie it in beyond that point it will stay straight let's see now that looks much better perfect All right, so next is the veiling um, uh, here I'm going to be using uh, Kingfisher uh, these feathers right there and these are quite good feathers so I'm only going to be using one and these can also be a little bit tricky and tie, to tie in so so here we go that's the feather I've chosen as you can see this is not a center feather but again for a fishing fly I really don't care um, they will uh, straighten out after you fished it for a little bit that's so what I do here I just go in and you never strip a feather uh, where you're gonna tie it in so what I'm just gonna do I'm gonna be careful go in with my scissors trim it down like that I want to leave some of this gray in the bottom so like that really careful all right so that's how I want it I take it you know upright and place it on my side of the tail and then as I now lay the thread it ends up laying on top that's perfect it might be a little bit hard to see now but you can definitely see it's there and it and it does shine through alright so next is a butt which uh, consists of red wool um, and I have a tiny piece right here and there's two ways to tie this in you can either tie it in uh, like you know a, a thread and just wrap it a few turns or you can dub it onto the thread and personally uh, I prefer the latter all right so what I like to do uh, is I start with waxing the thread again having just a little bit of extra wax on really helps for this process and this is just a tiny piece of leather uh, with some wax in it All 
it's again it's kind of awkward to tie this because I have this camera in between me and the fly so the wax I was using is is proper cobbler's wax uh, it was made by a, a good friend of mine uh, Roy Toriachin and uh, I'll leave a link to his Instagram uh, in the description below uh, you should really go check him out and give him a follow uh, it's a really great tire um, tying a lot of uh, really old patterns uh, you know from the earliest descriptions ever recorded alright so now we're done with the tip tag uh, the tail the tail veiling and the butt and now it's time for us to tie in the ribbing uh, which is oval silver tinsel and and this oval silver tinsel you know uh, it can be a little bit thick so what I like to do is to use my nails here and I peel off a portion of this and as this is a small fly and everything I tie down matters I like to tie it in so that I have this whole inner core going the whole body length to, to help keep the body even so I tie this in straight underneath even a little bit on my far side there you go now you see now I am starting to tie myself into the return point here uh, after the eye. Now I have to choose how far I want to go with the body and, and where I'm at right now here uh, is good. I like to leave good room uh, for the hackle and the head and everything. Remember there are two throat hackles on this fly. So I gotta have room for both of them uh, and the head. And I still want to have a little bit of, of bare hook shank in front here to have my to tie in my knot. So I'm not going to go any further than that. Now as I said before, uh, I'm going to show you a really easy way to get uh, even turns real quick. And that's to make yourself a dubbing loop. And just hold your dubbing loop in your finger. And keep it at an angle. And now you can easily go like this. I can just go in here and trim this off so yeah as you can see I want my body thick um, and I just think it looks a lot better you know again I can just go forward here and stop right there All right so now it's time to tie in the tinsel for the body uh, which is silver and uh, I'm just using the good old mylar from uh, uni which uh, is gold on one side and silver on the other right so this body is gonna be silver so therefore I need to have the silver facing into the body when I tie it in like that and now you see when you fold it over as you can see I tied this in in the front so I end up laying this double and the reason for that is simply that you get a much smoother and nicer body if you do it like this. There you go. Just placing it down with two turns. Can you go three turns down like that. If 
five turns the tinsel will never uh, come out and just trim off the waist end as the ribbing should be in five equal turns Right, this would be a lot easier if I did have a rotary wise, but I don't. Yeah. Now, to secure this ribbing, I'm again going to go in with my nail here and peel off metallic outside and now I simply can just wrap it over like that and before I there you go all right next is the hackle um, which is gonna be blue and and I'm going to use this uh, rooster feather. Um, as you can see, it's slightly long, yeah, just about the body length. But for fishing fly, I find that to be really uh, desirable. So now I'm not really fussy about this. So what I'm doing here is that I just tie it in by the tip three turns or so. Uh, fold this back two turns. Then I simply go in and trim off this button. So now I can start to wrap down this hackle And I make sure I don't overdress because, in my in my experience, uh, this fly should be fairly sparse, and that's more than enough. Remember that we're gonna have one more hackle uh, in this throat. Right. Again, just locking it down. And I just go in here. Alright, so you can see now this hackle, it looks not very good uh, in my opinion. So what I like to do is that I take my fingers and I form this uh, triangle like this. And I just take it like that and I rub it. You see, now you sort of soften up the fibers here. This will help it to swim better uh, once you start fishing in this. I'm going to take away this fiber. Alright, so next is the galena. And uh, I already picked out this feather which I'm going to use. It's not perfect, you know, but as it's not a perfect feather, but you know, this is a fishing fly. and you know, I don't mind using these feathers at all. And I really like this one because it has a really thin stem so I can get a few turns of this. So there. <coughs> Alright, so same again. Um, gonna be careful when I'm wrapping this one.
Now this is actually a lot of hackle for such a small fly. Um, but, but it really doesn't matter that much. Um, you know, this will look really well once you've fished it a few times. So the last thing I'm going to do now before we start on the wing is to just pull everything down. I'm just going to tie myself a little bit up here to about there. This is just to force the fibers to stay down like that. Alright, so now I'm going to start on the wing. Alright, so now comes the colors in this fly, and this is a goose uh, shoulder. Right, I'm going to take out three fibers down to the same on the other side. And then the yellow. And as you can see, this is a fairly bad feather. Um, and I'm actually going to use the same side on both. So, there you go, three fibers. And if you use stuff like goose or, or even swarm, you can actually do this. Um, I would not recommend that for turkey. And same with the blue one as well. I could have just used one side, but I am going to use from both sides here. Because this is a mixed wing, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, so next is the peacock. And uh, here I'm only going to use one feather. I'm going to use two fibers for each side. Now to spice up the fly a little bit I'm gonna be using this uh, which is very very bright turkey. Um, it was kinda hard to get my hands on this but I think it, it looks really nice in a silver doctor. Um, I'm just gonna use two fibers again because these are quite uh, stiff fibers. Now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, brown mottled turkey. As you can see, this is just a turkey tail feather. Uh, here I'm going to use the same side, uh, three fibers for each. I might, you know, pick away one fiber or so if I feel it's going to be too much. Last is uh, teal, and, and I'm going to use a fair portion in this fly. Um, I'm not going to count them because this is just going to get brushed in anyway. Start by holding this in my hand uh, like this, every slip, and I place them outside each other. Like that. And as you can see now, I can easily just can easily just place them in. And the length doesn't really matter that much. The 
this wing right here is going to be my uh, side. So, wrong sides. Again, I'm just going to place it right outside. Squish it in there. Alright, so there you go. That's one wing done. Now I can just stick this butt end in my mouth. Moisten it. And there you go. That's one wing. Alright, so that's our two wings done. Alright, so now we're back at the vise and uh, we're ready to tie in our wings. The first thing I do is that I place my wings like this and I make sure they are not overlapping each other in any way. So okay, sorry if you can see that but don't need that fiber. Alright, so now um, this wing looks very massive. Um, it's not. And before I tie it in, I'm going to use my toothbrush here and brush out the fibers uh, a little bit. And I have to do that on my knee. Alright, so there's the result now. That looks much better. And now again, I'm going to find out exactly how long I want this wing. And yeah, this seems about right. So again, what I'm doing, I'm moist my fingers just a little bit. Just get some moisture into this part where I'm going to tie it in. And now all I can do is that I change hands and I do one loose turn and one hard turn. And you push down. Then just put down a few more wraps, you know, just to make sure they won't move. You know. So there you go. Now your wing uh, looks like that. And I admit it's not, you know, pretty uh, in regards of what you think of a salmon fly, but. Uh, if you look at a lot of the traditional uh, vintage uh, flies uh, that were tied for fishing, they often had wings very similar to this. And I just like to sort of go in here now and, and you can see what's happening here now. The wing breaks up and you get this sort of chaotic slip wing just like that. Alright, so here's something you can do, you know, if you think your wing is a little bit too long, you know. But be careful and you have to pull, you have to pull upwards like that, you know. Support on the, on the eye of the hook and you just pull upwards. And, you know, yeah, that's a perfect wing for this fly. Alright, so now the main wing is in. Um, we're going to add some uh, bronze mallard. Uh, to the sides and they are fairly simple uh, as you can see I tied them in with the tips uh, pointing downward uh, you know to help follow the the shape of the wing so there we go now again, just carefully going in here, just brushing this down. Something like this, you know, often happens. Just take it out and tie it in again. Like that. Alright, so, you know, this wing is very scruffy, uh, but that's the point. Uh, that's the point of this whole uh, fly. Is, you know, um, this scruff helps it move and 
it's what's going to keep it from not, um, you know, just act like a leaf uh, in the water. Alright, so next is to change our thread uh, because this fly is going to have a, a red head. So I'm just taking and tying on my my red thread uh, outside of this. Um, next is the topping and here's the topping that I found which is fairly fairly straight it's not perfect you know I can use my nail here to try and straighten it out but again it doesn't really matter uh, because you know after you fish this fly a few times it will uh, all straighten out very nicely all right, so that's about how long I want my topping. So what I do is I just pull out these bottom fibers. I take my scissors here and try and get this in frame. And I trim this off. Now I use my nail here and I create a, a kink right here. And this kink is important because that's gonna be where you're tying this in. And look at that. Topping is laying perfect on top. And it will stay that way. Alright, so last is the horns, uh, which consists of uh, blue yellow uh, macaw. Uh, beautiful material and I'm lucky enough to have a, a center tail feather so and I'm gonna show you how I do it All right so now I have taken a fiber from this side or you know if you keep your feather like this I took a fiber from the right side of this feather now I'm gonna take this fiber I'm gonna measure my length about there looks good and I just place it down like this there you go looks perfect now I just do the same with the other side and here I like to tilt my fly a little bit place it like that there you go I can just I'm gonna just put down one more turn and I can just manipulate from this stem until I have until I have it like I want it and yeah that's about it so now we're basically done with the fly and as you can see it is looking scruffy but this is gonna fish trust me right, so there's one thing I like to do before I complete this fly and that is to take some varnish and put onto the head and onto the butt ends and the reason for this is that I find it helps a lot uh, to make the wing not slip out when you start trimming them alright so now the varnish has dried uh, a little bit and uh, we can start uh, trimming down the butt ends and here I like to use a uh, blade a razor blade is perfect I uh, just like using these uh, these tape uh, cutting blades um, again it's gonna be a little bit hard because of the camera I'm gonna try to to show here what I do and I just take and I start cutting not straight downward but you know tapering forward so this blade is a little bit worse for wear but the last few ends here I'm just gonna go in with my scissors and I'm sorry this is really not ideal for me because I have the camera in front of me so 
I like to have a lot of room when I do this. So, okay, that's it. Um, again, before I start to shape up the head, I add even more varnish to this. So you can see I got a lot of varnish in front there. I can just go in with my dubbing needle and, and remove that. Just like that. Now we just make a nice little head. You know you could use wool uh, for the head as well but uh, for speed and durability I just like to use uh, red thread instead so now just make ourselves a nice little whip finish one more just to be safe So I hope you realize that you know this is not meant to be a pretty fly. Uh, I just wanted to illustrate how I tie my fishing flies, and you know this is a great way uh, to tie them because you don't need very high high quality materials. Um, you don't even have to have a matching pair, you know, for the wing. Uh, and this fly is going to look really good once you've fished it a few times. Um, and also the techniques are simple enough for, you know, even beginner fly tires to be able to make this fly. And once, once I'm done filming I'm going to varnish the head properly. Alright. That's about it. Um, this fly, in my opinion, look looks really well, and it looks like a traditional uh, fly, uh, which often had very chaotic wings. So, yeah. So this is, you know, not meant to be a a display piece. This is tied 100% to be fished with, and to be nice to the fish, not. Uh, the fisherman. I fished flies uh, tied just like this for many years and they fish very well. So I encourage you to tie one and, and fish it. Um, you know, it's a good feeling to catch a wild Atlantic salmon on, on a classic fly. Yeah, I guess that's about it for this video. Uh, it's long enough already, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, and see you next time.